Hi guys, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. You may have noticed that the Matterport share price today declined significantly. Ended the day down about 6.5%, but certainly it was down more than that earlier in the day. What was happening with Matterport that would drive the stock price down so low? I'm going to show you what I think it is, so we will discuss it right now. This is the big reason, or perhaps the only reason that I can see, why the share price of Matterport declined so much today. This is the report that came out from Credit Suisse. Some people would say Credit Suisse. Depends how you want to say it. But anyway, their support from CS came out indicating that they were going to drop the Matterport target price to $13 from $23. And they actually go through their methodology. So I'm going to run through just this part of this report today and answer this question. Why did the stock price decline? Why did their target price decline? First of all, we need to know that this is based on hosting their CEO, R.J. Pittman, for a deep dive into Matterport. That occurred on the 16th of March. So uh, this was in conversations with R.J. Pittman and, of course, analyzing the uh, company. In fact, they also took a deep dive into the 10K, which I'll also be discussing soon. Now, CS indicates that we continue to see significant opportunity and use cases around digitizing the built world. And they also think that Matterport's digital twin capture is differentiated from its competitors. But they state, however, industry adoption, especially by enterprise customers, has been slower than forecast by the company and ourselves. So that is a key statement here. What is the big driver for the price target decline Industry adoption has been slower than forecast by the company and also by Credit Suisse. They go on to further define how their price target was achieved. They say that it's driven by lower sales growth rates, higher dilution, which I'll explain in a little bit, and a reduction in Matterport's total company EV slash REV. If you're not familiar with that, that stands for enterprise value divided by the revenue as well as the annual recurring revenue multiple. That's what ARR is, annual recurring revenue. But they do go on to state that it's still above the broader technology sector. So if they see all of these negatives going for the company, why did they maintain their outperform rating, which is essentially like saying buy? They state that we expect to see sequential acceleration in subscription revenue through 2022 both in hardware, of course, they have the Axis device coming out, which I'll be talking about in another video, and also in software, as well as the productivity gains that they expect to see from the organizational hires that they had in the last year. So let's just address these. So the first one there, driven by lower sales growth rates. We're going to come down here to the revenue, uh, which gives us what the actual revenue was for 2021, and then we get the estimates as well. So we're going from 111 million in 2021 to only 129 million in 2022. That certainly is a decrease in the revenue growth rate. Of course, they're expecting for 2023 that that will pick up, and even out into 2024, we're looking at about $90 million more than they're expecting in 2023. So really it's that big 2022 drop off or decline there in the growth revenue growth rate. The next thing that they talk about here as a factor for lowering the price target is higher dilution. Let's just talk about what that is about. We'll come to this figure here, the Credit Suisse share count calculation. Of course, the company stated in their uh, recent documents that 277 million shares is what they expected during the first quarter and an increase up to 288 million shares by the end of the year. After diving through the 10K, which just came out on March 18th, uh, Credit Suisse calculates about 345 million shares total. So they included that then in their calculations here. Again, we go to the share count on their calculation and we see that 300 and almost 45 million shares. All right, let's just touch on this third reason for Matterport's price target reduction, and that is the company EV, which stands for enterprise value, divided by REV, which stands for revenue, or you might see sales in other documents, and ARR, which stands for annual recurring revenue multiple. We're going to skip down to this paragraph that says valuation and risk, and it says that they based this $13 price target, which previously was $23, on an EV slash revenue multiple of 20 times, which previously was 28. So there is the reduction in the multiple, 
and also based on what they're projecting for 2023 sales, which is $209 million, which previously they were projecting $219 million. So you can see that with the sales being reduced, that is going to reduce what the multiple is there. They were kind enough to provide us with the figures that they then used. So we see projecting out to 2023, they break it down into annual recurring revenue and non-annual recurring revenue. We get a total of 208.8 million and they've taken 25 times the ARR to come up with the $3 billion and then they take the nine times the non-ARR to tack on another 650 million and we can see that they've got a little more than 4 billion in enterprise value by 2023. After accounting for the debt in 2023, they're saying that the implied value will be just shy of 4.5 billion. They're taking then the share count that I talked about earlier, and that's where they come up with an implied value per share of $13 per share. That's it for this video then. Why is the share price down? I believe it's really just based on this news from yesterday, which was the drop in the target price from Credit Suisse, and I've showing you how Credit Suisse went about calculating that change in the target price. Share this information with a young person in your life and make investing a family affair. And as always, enjoy your investing.